Hello, everybody. Welcome to Word Talk. Glad you're with us. I'm Frankie Rendino, and that's Jimmy Ray. We always pray before we start. Lord, in the blood name of Jesus, God, we come before you. Jimmy, I, and everyone watching, no matter who they are, where they are on earth, God, we ask for your wisdom, your knowledge, your word to come through us and help us and guide, guide us and bless us. We're nothing without you, Lord, and we ask all this in the blood name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord and hallelujah. I'm pretty psyched. We had a wonderful move of God before we started. The Lord did a couple wonderful things for us, and I praise his holy name for it. We're talking about fasting still. And I want to slow down a little bit because I really believe with all my heart that it's easy for me and Frankie. We was raised uh, with a lot of knowledge. We praise the Lord for it, and we don't think we're special because of it. But we realize that we were given a lot of knowledge, so it's easy to... If you're Life not careful, yeah. take it for granted and realize not everybody was as blessed as we was. When it comes to Bible fasting, that's one of the areas that we was really blessed. I mean, uh, we, a matter of fact, in our church that we both pretty much grew up in, uh, the pastor every week would say, how many people this week are going to fast at least a meal for the services? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, he did. And he did that and, and cool. to encourage his congregation to stay in a spirit of fasting and praying. It's a, it was a wonderful thing, you know. Uh, I was taught fasting long before that, like I told you guys last week. Uh, I was thrown into a few fasts that marked me the way God moved. But I, I want to slow down a little bit. And hopefully next week I'll have time to maybe gather some scriptures, maybe because we'll, unless we end it tonight, we don't know. We never plan it out like that. But if we go on, I'd like to gather up some stories where they got Bible results from fasting, which would be really, really good. But uh, I want to slow down and let's go back to, to the quote of pastor who's a friend of ours, Warren. We don't run the pro program. The Holy Spirit does. Yeah, Hopefully yeah, see this. yeah, and that's that's important. It's important for for God to have His way. And when you're talking about real Bible fasting, you're talking about God having His way. That's the main thing about Bible fasting: is you want God's will more than you want your will. Matter of fact, that's the only way you can Bible fast a real Bible fast. It's because you're stirred to want God's will more than you are to feed your own stomach, to eat food, to take away that headache. Because a lot of times when you fast, you, uh, you, you, uh, you'll you go into a headache and you can get kind of mm -hmm. sick. You can. I know you're not right now. You can. I have done it and it's... There are special fasts. He's on one that's special. His other one was even more special. But you can be, I've been on trying ones too, where the first three days, do you think about it, it's about to kill you. Right. Headaches and pains. And we were talking about the other day that, you know, I've had fast where like the whole time you just feel like, God, are you sure you want me to go? I'm, I'm getting so ill. I'm so sick. Please, God, help me. And we're going to talk about some of those things you have to know. So let's back up to the, to why you fast again. I know we've talked about some of these things, but actually we threw so much at you so quickly and, and. How many we had? Two of them on fasting? Or I think three. Yeah. This is the fourth? I believe so, yeah. Are you sure? Well, either this way, is, yeah. I thought it was the third one. Well, let me tell them. You go ahead. Oh, okay. But anyways, we threw a lot in there. So let's slow down a little bit. So I wanted to talk first about, again, the reasons why you fast. Fasting, first and foremost, is to get you closer to God. In Bible fasting... Uh, the Bible teaches it is a time of afflicting your soul and laying in the ashes, in the dirt, before your Lord and Master, so that you can yield your life more over to Him. Now, in a nutshell, this is what Bible fasting is. It's a time of presenting yourself before the Lord, and nothing presents your body as a living sacrifice more than Bible fasting. Because you are now sacrificing your life. You are a living sacrifice when you buy, uh, go on a Bible fast. This is what else is food fuels you. We can't live without food. Even Jesus, when he was here, couldn't live without 
food because he was human too. He had to eat. Yeah. So when you go without food, you're making basically the ultimate sacrifice. You really are. And if people are watching this, they say, oh, that ain't true. That's because you don't fast. Yeah. <laughs> try it. Try it. Try it. Just, and you'll agree. And not only that, it's actually more than just, okay, well, you have to have food to live. We know that's all true. It's actually more than that. You take away your food, and not just because you need it to stay alive. There's more to it than that. It just seems like when you stop eating, you gave your whole life away. Honestly, that's the way it feels to me. When I fast, I feel like everything has stopped, and... I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. That I mean, that really comes to life when you're on a Bible fast. Because it's not just, the the food is more of a bigger part of us, is what, is what I'm trying to say. Then we are just eating for strength. And if you don't know, if you don't know that, it's because you haven't fasted. Because it, it is a mental thing when you're not eating. It is a habit thing to eat. You eat every day. You eat every day. When you cut that out, you, you're, you're breaking your whole existence, honestly. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Frankie. You, you're breaking your whole mm -hmm. existence. You've yeah. changed your whole existence it, it, on it, earth. I'm it, not kidding. Uh, it kind of has a way of rerouting every single hour of every single day. It does. Of your entire life from the beginning to the end of the fast. And it doesn't matter if it's one day, two days, three days. Every fast that you do with an honest heart and a willing heart, God sees and he honors. They don't have to all be long fasts. No. Because some of you are hearing this and you're like, what? And you want to know more about it? Study it in the word. Jesus said this kind can go forth by none other but prayer and fasting. And you have to start somewhere. It's not wrong to fast a meal. That's good. And then maybe fast another meal the next week. And then maybe fast one right. day. Do it smartly. Drink a lot of stuff. But you got to start somewhere. And... I only wanted to add one thing. He said it's presenting your body a living sacrifice. You better believe that. In Romans 12, 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord. Which is your reasonable service. Which is your Forgot that. Well, yeah, I, I, it's your reasonable service. It says that right at the end of the verse. It's your reasonable service. Why is it your reasonable service? Because he gave his life for us. We can't give a cheeseburger up for him. And we'll be right back, but you might not even notice. Hello. We're, We're back. back. <laughs> <laughs> That's one mine and one accord. Okay, we've got our power crank back on. I'm sorry, something happened with my phone. It usually stays charged for a couple days, actually, but... I must not have charged it last night or something. But anyway, so when you're Bible fasting, it honestly does seem like the whole world stopped. And Now, the only reason why we know that little fasts are successful is because the experience of a long fast teaches you how profitable fasting is. When you go on a long fast, you're going deeper and deeper and deeper into the things of God. And for that reason, you start to realize how much God moves even for a small fast. That's the best way to learn fasting, is on a long fast. Then you'll learn to appreciate fasting in general. So, And you'll learn to appreciate what a sacrifice it is. To it God. really is. And, and before we started this podcast, I have an app that I use for the Bible, the King James Version Bible. And I went in there and showed him, you can search by word for the whole Bible, Genesis through Revelation. And I put the word fasting in, and you would be absolutely shocked how many places in the Bible, Old and New Testament, that the word fasting or fast is in there. You'd be shocked. Look it up. Yeah. Sorry. And, you know, I always looked at it like, you know, it's kind of like being in a boat. And the boat is the word of God that keeps us afloat, Okay. And on a boat, I'm talking about a rowboat, you have two oars. And I've always looked at it like one oar is prayer and one oar is fasting. If you only have one oar, you're going to go round circles. If you want to keep going into God, you need to be praying. This one was praying one. Praying, fasting, and living in the Word of God, the boat. Living in that boat. Praying, That's a great analogy. fasting, it is. You go around circles. If you only pray, and trust me, if now if you don't care about getting closer to God, 
This podcast isn't for you. If you don't care about getting close to God and God being a living reality, this podcast is the wrong podcast for you. But if you want to get closer to God, you're going to come to a point where you realize that, hey, I've been praying, I've been reading my Bible, I go to church, but I feel like I need to get closer. The Holy Ghost is going to let you feel that. Fasting heals that, buddy. Because... You can't get closer to God. Now, this is a powerful statement, but you can't get closer to God than going on a real Bible fasting. Because like I said, you shut down your life. And how do I know that's true? That it's really your life? Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And he said that when he was fasting, when Satan tried to tempt him to come off of his fast and turn a stone to bread. And so he was saying that that fasting is as a is life. And honestly, when you go on a long fast, and we're not going to talk just about long fast, but it's on a long fast that you start to come into a place where you're conscious that you're fasting almost constantly. I mean, every second, because there's such a divining line, and I've talked about that before. You can be with a group of people, and they're eating, and you feel so separate from them. Not because you're going without food. It's because your life is shut down, and you've stepped into another zone. Or like, for lack of a better term, <laughs> dimension. I hate the word realm. Right. I hate the word realm. But well, I hate the word dimension, too. Okay, but it's, but like, you're, okay. it's like you're but mentally it's... and spiritually in another world, even though yeah. you're walking at work and with people, and, and that really does happen. Because really the things does. of God are not another realm. They're not another dimension. God's real. And is it supernatural? That. Yes. But they are very real. It's not some make-believe fairy tale. Yeah. It's not another um, another layer or something like that. That's silly. That's we know what that is. That's people assuming things, and since they don't understand God, they start to assume. For instance, heaven. I'm getting a little off topic. For instance, heaven. People turn heaven into a place of a cosmic place or something like another dimension. It's absolutely not. Heaven is a real place that has streets, trees it talks about, lakes it talks about, seas of glass, houses, horses that fly. And you know there's other animals there. God loves animals. There's more animals on earth than there are people. Did you ever know that or come to realize that? The, the world is almost all water. Look at all the creatures that are in the ocean. People are just a small percentage. Just God is into animals, and that's a whole other discussion. But heaven is a place, a tangible place. And so is hell, unfortunately. And so is hell. And heaven is a place... I'm just going to knock your socks off. Because the Lord opened my eyes to the fact that well, I never said it was another dimension. He just opened my eyes to that one day. And he showed me that's people assuming things because they can't relate to me. And it was then that I realized that heaven is just as real as earth. If Now, here, this is what the statement I was going to make that will knock your socks off. I believe with all my heart you could get in a rocket ship and go to heaven. <laughs> You're like, wait, what? what? What are you saying? I'm saying I, only God knows how far away heaven is. Or close, or where or close, or whatever. But it's right. a real place. It's a real place it's that real you could go moon, to. The real is our planet. Right. When Jesus ascended, this just came to me. And no doubt the Holy Ghost brought that to my mind. When Jesus ascended to go up to heaven, he went up. He didn't just disappear. He ascended up to heaven. He was going someplace. He didn't just vanish and shrink into another dimension. And as it's a matter of fact, that. it came from some place too. That's right. Heaven's a real place. People are going to be shocked and thrilled beyond words when they get to heaven, especially the children of God that haven't come into the reality of it all. Their just socks are going to be knocked off. I mean, it's just going to just blow them away. It's going to be a blast. Honestly, it's going to be a blast. And I, I, I think I'm going to tell you this. We're getting a little off subject, but not really, because the hand of the Lord leads and guides the way he wants. And we're going to talk about some realities of God 
And Bible fasting brings you into him. God carried me to heaven one day. Have I told you this? No, thanks, man. I didn't see anything, but I absolutely went there. Beyond a shadow about nobody can tell me otherwise. I stake my soul on it. I was in the middle of a song. God had given me a song. I was writing a song and I was recording. And I was literally laying down my vocals, my final vocals, and I was laying them down. And the spirit of the living God really had a hold of me. And suddenly I was in heaven. The Holy Ghost lifted me up in the anointing and I was there. I knew I was there. I know what it feels like to a certain degree now because I realized from this experience that the human body can only handle so much of heaven down here. He could only let me feel it so much. I believe that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I believe it. I haven't experienced it. And this is the... I've never heard anybody say this. The Bible actually alludes to that in different places. I've never heard anybody say what I'm getting ready to tell you. But it's according to the Word of God. And actually, there was a scripture that just came to me that I never even tied into this before. But let me tell you about this visitation that I had with the Lord. So I'm in this song and I'm recording literally before a microphone in the studio by myself, though. Recording and the spirit of the living God was on me. I had been pleading for him. God, anoint me. Holy Ghost, sing through me. Sing this part through me. And suddenly, I was in heaven. And I began to bawl and cry so very, very, very hard. Not, uh, not because of an earthly emotion. I'm going to have a hard time explaining this. I began to cry because of the holiness of it, was melting me. <laughs> it's the only thing I can tell you. I begin to cry and melt. But under this anointing, I begin to laugh. Ooh, did I laugh. I can feel the spirit of the living God rising up in me right now. Matter of fact, ooh, the glory of God is, I can feel it just flowing through my eyes. And I begin to laugh and Heaven is a place of joy unspeakable and full of glory. And I never tied that in with that. But as I started to tell you, the Holy Ghost brought that scripture to me that confirms that heaven is a place of great joy. Why? Because God is there. The Bible says, in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. The joy I had, have you ever had a laugh? before where you laughed so hard you felt like you was going to pee your pants sure you have a puke or something yeah and you laughed so hard it hurt that's exactly what i felt exactly oh the laughing you'll laugh when you get there you'll laugh the bliss of it the no devils and the no self and the freedom. Now suddenly you can see as God has been seeing you. You can hear as God has been hearing you. No more tears, no more pain. No more, no more looking through a glass darkly. And to know that you've arrived. I made it. I made it. And there's Jesus and there's our loved ones and different ones. The laughter of it all. The laughter of it all. Here's the kind of laughter it is. You'll take off, no doubt, people do this all the time in heaven, and I'd be one to do it. Frankie would be one to do it. Now, our buddy Dan, I don't know if he would do it. Because <laughs> he's more conservative, so to speak. He won't be up there. He won't be up there, he said. Oh, Lord. Yeah. He will be there. We won't no, I him. mean that he won't be conservative up there is what I meant. Oh, I thought you meant he no, won't be no, up there. I no, thought no, you were no. being ornery. No. Because he gets awful ornery with Dan. You ain't going, Dan. No, I meant he won't be conservative up there. And embarrassed up there. No, he won't. You're right. You're right. But he better be there with us. He will. Oh, he'll be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, it's the type of joy that you would take off skipping and running like a little child. And laughing, 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 laughing. I'm here. Hallelujah. I made it. I made it. And people will join in, no doubt, with you. And run and skip and shout and praise God and yell. If that sounds crazy to you, then you've never been under the anointing. That sounds like home to me. I can just feel the glory and the power of that. That's what I experienced. I experienced it. But you didn't see anything. I didn't see a thing. I didn't see a thing, but I felt what, and I knew I was in heaven. And the recording 
was distorted. And what that means is I was crying and yelling so loud as I was singing this song, I still was singing the song, that I sung it in such a loud volume that the it was too loud and it overpowered the microphone. And as I came out of the anointing of it all, I was still laughing. I told God, God, I'll, I, there's nothing in the world that would cause me to delete that and re-sing it. I don't care how distorted it is. It's, it's you such left a, it in it? Well, I left it in it, brother. <laughs> I didn't care. It was too anointed. And But, okay, nothing brings you into a reality. We're talking about fasting now again. Into a, the reality of God, like Bible fasting. And let me say something. So, that was an experience God let Jimmy have. Just one I, time. I've had other experiences. I don't have time to go into them. And you might not believe them if I told you. And that's okay. Because I know as sure as I'm breathing oxygen, they were real. But the whole point of this is, is when you go on a real Bible fast, and you spend time with God, way more time with God daily, than you would if you weren't on it, you will sooner or later have some kind of awesome, crazy, supernatural, making the Bible more real to you than oh, ever yeah. before. There'll be reality given. You will get it. It might scare you. It might make you laugh. It might make you ball on the floor. But trust and believe me, it will make God even more real if he was ever real to you, it'll make him so much more real that, like he said, it'll knock your socks off. Yeah. And it will. Now, yeah. you may think we're crazy, and that's okay. But Until what you want it fast, but then you'll what, be crazy like us. Yeah. But what we're telling you, remember, it's Bible. Mm -hmm. Nothing we tell you is not Bible. Even when he said he felt heaven but didn't see it and, and experiences like that, that's Bible. I tell you all the time on our, my shorts and on these podcasts, if what we tell you is not straight from the Word of God, shut us off and never watch us again. Mm -hmm. So, in Bible fasting, you're fasting, we're breaking it down still, you're fasting because you need to get closer to God. That's the bottom line. You need to get closer to God because whatever... You, Whatever you're feeling the need for, maybe it's maybe it's a specific thing like you need, like we've talked about this before. Maybe you need a healing, and you're trying to bleed for that healing, and you just can't seem to have the faith that you know you should have, so that you can l claim the promises of God and let the promises of God work for you. And well, Bible fasting can bring you under the anointing for the faith to work, because. Faith is operated through the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Lord has taught me that. And Bible fasting brings you, if it's a real Bible fast, it brings you under subjection to the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It brings you up to under subjection to God, and then you have nowhere else to go but into God's anointing. Yes. If you're on a real Bible real fast. Bible and fast. let's say one thing, too. I've been pretty quiet today. Uh, let's say one thing, too. I keep saying it's Bible, it's Bible, it's Bible. Go find it in the Bible. There's examples of people that needed more of God, maybe in an emergency or needed an answer, and they fasted. Mm -hmm. Point in case, the best example is Jesus lived approximately 30 years on earth. And before he healed one person or did one miracle, and of course he could have done them, he fasted because he was part human. Not only did he fast, but he was led of the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. Now think about this. He was walking around a desert with no food, probably only water to drink, for 40 days and 40 nights. I'm on a fast, and I got milk and whatever else in a refrigerator, and I go lay in a bed. He was wandering around the wilderness fighting the devil off. So my point is, it's important. And people did it all through the Word of God, Old Testament, New Testament, when they needed to reach heaven about a, just to get closer to Him, or they needed an answer, or they needed an all-out miracle. They fasted and mm -hmm. prayed. And if you turn to Acts 10, somewhere around the 10th chapter, after Jesus goes back up to heaven, and the early church is really getting solidified, and, and they call them Christians for the first time. 
everywhere they they would go to a city and stuff would happen and then they'd leave the city and it says and they prayed and fasted and went into the city yeah. and then something happened there and then three four five six seven verses later they went to the next and they prayed and fasted look it up if you don't believe me they were constantly fasting mm -hmm. to get more of the power of god and you show me a church that doesn't have much fasting, I'll show you a church that doesn't, doesn't have, have much, much miracles. Power. That's right. They don't have much power. Well, they might have shouting power. <laughs> it's easy to have shouting power. That can be fake. That might be just diesel, and not even real gas. And that's done in self. No offense, but it's done in self. Yeah. I'm not We're talking it, about the kind of power that you know will shake you down to your core because you know it's the spirit of the living God. Yeah, power to cast out demons, to heal the sick and raise the dead. Now that's my my Lord's ministry. And we want to continue his work. Well, then you're going to have to follow in his footsteps. Now, see, that's the main reason that you should know that you, you're supposed to fast. is because Jesus is our example and he fasted. He fasted. So on a Bible fast, you feel the need to get in contact with God. Okay, so how do you go about fasting? Okay, we're breaking this down. Okay, now, it's between you and God how you fast. But I'm going to give you some scriptures on Bible fasting. In the Word of God, there's three different ways that we were told they fasted. Now, it's between you and God how you fast. But I'm going to give you scripture. Um... There's three different types of Bible fast that the Bible talks about. One is they would fast with no food and no water. But they would only fast for, I think, the longest I've ever wrote in was three days. No food, no water. Three days. I think Paul did that, didn't he? Paul did that. I think. Paul, Paul did it out yeah. of complete, knocked on his keister submission to God when he realized Jesus was real and he'd been killing Christians. And Jesus knocked him down, and out of complete reverence and awe of God, he did not eat or drink for three days. He was also struck blind, and on the third day he got his sight back, and who knows if he ate then, it doesn't say, but yeah, I'm sure three, he did. Three days and nights, no no water. I'm sure him. he did. Oh yeah, he had to, because it was three, yeah. But anyhow, go ahead. Yeah, but, um, and then just think about this for a moment, I never thought about this till this second, but here the Lord Jesus appears to him, and, and tells him, Paul... What in the world are you doing? It's hard for you to fight against me. You're, you're, you're fighting against me. And, Lord, what must I do? I'll tell you what to do. I want you to go to the city. Okay, so now God has talked to him, made a path, path for him. And he's, to most people, they'd be, but hallelujah, I found the Lord. He came to me and visited me. He needed more than that. He needed answers from God. He needed to contact God. What did he turn to? Bible fasting. See, the Hebrews were taught this. The Israelites were taught this. That if they were in desperation, God would hear a fast. All through the Old Testament. It started in the Old Testament. It was all the way through it. Thousands of years. And then even in the New Testament. And, and then up to Jesus. And he did it. And even sinners would fast. And I don't know if he got saved. The very, it sounds like Frankie got saved the moment the Lord came to him in his living room. But there's been other people. It was the, the moment. It all yeah, happened I'm sure within it was. less than two I'm, minutes. I'm sure it was. And the very next day I went on a fast. And it's weird we said the verse earlier because, um, you know, if we have to go do, this is the third one I looked it up. If we got to do a fourth one, so what? So this what? is one of the most important and the most tangible ways to get closer to God, mm -hmm. to learn about God, to get God deeper in you you to get deeper in your life so if we what if yeah. we did seven it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it's this is one of the ways why do you think i we told you we it was left out of one of the editions of the bible because there's someone out there that don't want you to have it don't know about it and it's left out of most churches yeah and even but, wait hang on one second. Ahead. sorry so this verse we said before romans 12 1 present your bodies a living sacrifice to god which is your reasonable holy and acceptable which is your reasonable service well, when I got saved and God dealt with me very forcefully, very plainly, he brought one verse to my mind, that verse, look it up, Romans 12, 1. And because he said that to me in that verse, the very next day, I didn't know what else to do. I felt like I was to put my face in the ground and just, so I went on a fast. I, I had no idea if it'd be a meal, a day, then it went over seven 
And then the next thing you know, on day 41, I'm crying while I'm eating toast because I didn't want it to end. Yes. Romans 12, 1. Look it up. Mm -hmm. so, and that's the joy of Bible fasting. And I've had that before where I've cried, shed I tears when it was time to come off. But see, even sinners in the Old Testament would fast. I didn't and, know and that. Would, yeah, and it would turn the hand of God. In um, Jonah's day, the whole uh, city of Nineveh fasted. Um, and Jonah went in there and said, look, God's going to destroy you all. It's going to destroy you. Sick and tired of the way you're living. He didn't give a option. He didn't have no love either if you go study it. But he came and told him God's going to destroy this city. He's seen your wickedness. They all went on a fast. And the Bible says they even made their animals fast. Oh, I think I do remember that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They made their animals fast. And God turned from his wrath when he seen that. And you see, hear that. And these were saying. You believe the Word of God is the Word of God. You believe the Bible. Those stories are real. They're as yeah. real as you and I. And they made, out of, out of respect and awe and fear of God, they made their animals fast. Mm -hmm. That's something. Mm -hmm. We're getting close. Okay. Good man. Five man, time times. flies. So, but it, 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 they humbled themselves in sackcloth and ashes and repented. You, when a person throws their self in the dust like that, they turn from their life and they surrender to God. In Bible fasting, you always surrender to God. Always. If you do it for the right way and for the right reason, to be honest with you, you have no other choice. You're not eating. Right. And I think even if you don't start it and you don't have your everything screwed on right, but you're, you're sincere about it, you'll still make it through through a Bible fast. That's the precious part of a Bible fast. Look at the people in Nineveh. They didn't really know how to fast, I'm sure. And they weren't even saved. Right. They weren't even saved. Or right with God, we should say. Yeah. No, they weren't saved. They, they weren't right with God. And they were so wicked, God was going to destroy the city. Sent a prophet to go tell them. And here God had compassion on them, and they found the Lord on that fast. You say, they didn't find the Lord. They sure did find the Lord. If they were still as wicked as they were, he wouldn't say, oh, I forgive you, even though you're going to do it again tomorrow. They found the Lord. They turned to the Lord. That's what fasting does. It turns you from self to God. Now, this is how you really Bible fast. And this is the reason why when we fast, me and Frankie, and, and we're not the only ones. We know many, oh, many, many Lord, people that Bible fast. Yeah. My brother fast. My wife fast. People that I grew up with fast, and those that were saved, that is. Um, you, it, it turns the hand of God for you in a way that's that nothing else can. Okay, so how do you go on, on that Bible fast? There's three different ways I told you. The, oh, the yeah, one, is, one was three days one is, no food more. No food and water. And that's never, in the Word of God, they never went over three days that I know of, and I'm almost positive about that, with uh, longer than three days without water. The other way is they fasted uh, all food and just drink water. And the third way is in the book of Daniel. Daniel fasted what is called, uh, well, people call it a Daniel fast. Slightly they call it a Daniel fast. And isn't yes. that what he only ate things he hated? He, he ate things that were unpleasant to him. Now, I've tried that, and I'd rather fast water. I've tried to make gross things, and that, forget it. I, it don't work for me. And now, look, now, some people, you know what, uh, you can, I'll tell you one thing. You, on your fast, you're going to be recorded, uh, rewarded according to your sacrifice. There's some people that say, well, look, uh, with my steak, I like salt and pepper on it. I won't use butter. Salt I'm not going to use butter. And I salt won't pepper. get the buck baked potato, Lord, but I got to have the steak. I'm going to eat my gonna baked, go on. I'm going to eat my baked potato without butter. Lord have mercy. And Bless your heart between, between, between you and God. God. <laughs> I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to judge you, but I really want to see how much God you get from going without butter on your baked potato. Remember something. God knows every thought of ours continually. He knows the, the sacrifice. sacrifice. You think he doesn't know if it's a sacrifice for you or not? Right. We'll have to discuss this more of how to go on it properly and 
there are certain in the next one and then there are certain people that can't fast for health reasons but there's still the way to fast for them because it's it's all about the sacrifice and they can get a miracle yeah but, yeah so we'll take off next time we bring it out of time i know we'll take off next time right here and help me remember we're going to take right off on how to fast yeah. how to fast then we'll how to go on how to end how and to start one what you go one. through while you're on it you yeah. got to be prepared how the devil's going to come after you while you're on it lord have mercy but how the lord will fight for you while you're on it so there's a lot to discuss but exciting it's things coming because again it's crucial again let's don't take our word for it get in the bible and look it up this is how down through thousands of years including jesus and then the early church that made the church that you're supposed to be a part of it's how they sought God and got with God and got answers and got closer and got power. That's and how they did it. And I want to leave you with this. Before I went to Africa on the last trip, I knew I needed God to show up and manifest his glory like he did through his son Jesus. So I went on a fast for that reason, a long fast. When I got there, blinded eyes were open. Deaf ears were unstopped. God did the unbelievable and the unthinkable, not just once or twice, again and again and again. Great miracles and deliverance. Demons fleed under the almighty anointing that flows through the name of Jesus. They would struggle casting out demons. The demons would come out at once. All of that comes through Bible fasting. It's the only way. That's why Jesus said when they asked, well, why do we, we didn't have the power to cast those devils out? Look it up. He said, this kind goeth forth by none other but prayer and fasting hallelujah that I'm boat gonna, remember that boat yeah that's a good one i'm gonna pray for you right now and we'll continue this next time and and one last thing someone requested a dear friend of ours requested we talk about fasting i had no idea that would happen and i had just started on a fast and i had no money didn't even have an inkling how long it would go but i started it and i was on a few days and someone requested we do fasting and we knew it wasn't a coincidence well, here I am. It's day 30. <laughs> I am not telling it to brag. I'm not fasting to be seen of men. I'm fasting to sit at the foot of Jesus and that cross and get closer to him and find what he wants me to do next. And next week, he'll tell you how that he always got to use some of that anointing. He got to pray for somebody. And they got a fantastic miracle. You have to tell him next yeah, week. Yeah, they did. And I guarantee it's because of the fast. Guarantee you. Do you think so? Oh, yeah, I know so, because I've never had that happen before in my life. Mm -hmm. It got an instant but, miracle, and it even freaked them out. Freaked them out, freaked me out, and I hear tell it freaked a few other people out, too. Yeah, Love at people. their church. Let's pray. Lord, I bring everybody watching this, God, boy, every boy, girl, and man, woman, anywhere on earth, God, move for the people. Yes, Lord. And if you're out there and you want what we have, Yes, Lord. I should say, if you want Jesus, because we're nothing without Jesus, right. but if you want the Jesus that turned our lives inside now, say this prayer with me. Say, oh God, I believe that your son came down here and died for me. I believe that his blood that he sacrificed can make me into a new creature and wash all my sins away. Come into my heart, Jesus, and really, truly make me new, God, and forgive me of everything. Make me a new creature and yes, give me the I power. Give me the power to live different and to live the way you want me to. Come in, Jesus. Now, if you meant that prayer, the Bible says you confess with your mouth, believe with your heart. He's just and faithful to forgive you. Lord, move for the people if they need any kind of miracles, physical, spiritual, financial, mental. It doesn't matter what it is, God. You can heal. I bind every devil and demon and spirit, God. And I bring these people and, and every need they have before you, Lord, through the blood. And that by your holy word says the prayer of faith will save the sick. God move for them. And most importantly, you guys out there, give God all the honor, the glory, yes, and the praise. That's the most important thing. I told the person who got the miracle. Go give God the honor. Forget about me. Yeah, all I was is somebody who got said words because God told me to. Okay? Remember, guys, we need your help. Help win souls. Org. If you have prayer requests or you need anything that we can do for you. Uh, suggestions or whatever the ministry of Jesus one at gmail and soon we'll be starting another podcast good Lord willing on uh, missionary talk and we'll tell you our Africa stories and stuff like that so until next time we love you but more importantly Jesus loves you more yeah. yes and my little Frankie trademark is but it is absolutely the truth and it's Bible too 
if the truth could set him and I free and turn us into new creatures, it can do the same thing to you, for you, if you'll let it. Amen. We'll see you next time. We love you. you.